Hello everyone. What I wanted to show you today is what you can get out of a really cheap PC because lately I've been on YouTube and stuff and I've been looking at people with the new Mac processor, the M chip or the silicon chip or whatever they call it, which looks great, but and also um other people that built their PCs for recording and they have, you know, 32 64 gig RAM even more than that. And of course, these machines will run audio and DAWs. It doesn't matter what DAW you use, if it's Cubase, Logic, or whatever, you know, Ableton, um, FL, they'll all run smoothly. You know, you won't get any sort of issues. The one thing you, of course, have to look out for if you're on a, um, a laptop, it's always worth perhaps buy if it's certainly PC based buying one that you can return and checking how many tracks you can get out of it or watching other people use them on YouTube. Also, um, I use um, Monitor Latency Checker, I'll perhaps put a, um, a link to that in here, that if you run that it will, it will actually tell you how suitable the laptop is for audio recording. It checks DCP latency, I think it is, which is how efficient the software and the drivers are. Um, and the hardware for or a multi-track recording. But what I saw on YouTube was um, a lot of people with the new MacBook, or the, sorry, not MacBook, it's the MacBook Air, isn't it? Um, the new processor, and they were seeing how many tracks they could get out of their computer, and a modern computer can do a huge amount of tracks. Now, I set this up just, I recorded a guitar track, here you go, it's really quiet because I'm gonna stack these tracks up. Um, I recorded a guitar track for about a minute along with just a drum track and I duplicated that track and I got to about 80 and this computer didn't fall over at all but it's just audio recording. Now if I can tell you a bit of information about this computer, I just had a look, I haven't looked at it for ages. This isn't my main computer for recording but this was given to me, this um, PC was very kindly given to me and it's um, it's got the grand total of four gigabytes of RAM, and I just looked at um, how much is available. So the physical RAM is 3.93 gig, but it's actually available to me, because obviously the operating system and stuff are taking over some of the the RAM to run. So available to me is 2.9, 2.19 gigabytes of RAM, which isn't a lot. One thing it doesn't have in its favor is an SSD hard drive. now they're really important a solid state drive they make things so much quicker booting up and stuff but i i actually went into the bios and see when the bios was last updated and the bios was updated last in 2008 so it's not cutting edge by any stakes you know it's it's relatively old pc obviously it's got the latest windows on it and whatever but i just wanted to show you what you could get with a probably a basic PC that you might have around your house. Obviously, everyone's computer is different, so I can't say your computer will run Cubase absolutely no problem at all. But just to show you what you can do with a really limited amount of equipment, because whenever I watch YouTube and stuff, I'm seeing all these people, they've got spaceship like studios and they've got fantastic computers, you know, they're testing out what the cheese grater. Mac can do and that's great you know fantastic but the chances of everyone being able to afford that or get their hands on one of those is you know they're not everyday machines so to speak so this was a computer that was given to me it's well over 10 years old it's got four gigabytes of RAM it's got a 256 SSD drive which is a plus um, but if you're gonna get a drive I'd get more than 256 or a secondary drive like this has um, that you can put compositions in. And if you think about the history of recording, if you took the Beatles, it wasn't till um, Hey Jude that they actually had um, eight tracks that they could record to. Before then, they were recording to four tracks of audio. Obviously, they could do something called bouncing down with those, and they had tricks they could use, but that's what they had at their disposal. And, of course, they had... Um, um, loads of outboard gear compressors and fantastic stuff like that so it wasn't just we've got to obviously put that into the pot here that the fact that 
our pro not only are we recording audio because this did 80 tracks and it was fine but the problem is when we start adding effects they had outboard effects to take away some of that that issue that we're going to get so i'm not even going to duplicate this with um just as it is with no effects so i thought what we could do is put something that's quite heavily processor based so should we put um a reverb on here because reverb uses a fair amount of cpu so let's put the most probably the most heavily cpu um, intensive one as well in cubase this stock one which is um this one here and for argument's sake let's stick a delay on there as well it doesn't matter so we've got two effects running obviously i know on each track you'll probably want more than two effects but this is just for argument's sake we've got an audio track and we've stuck two effects on it so let me turn my oh sounds unusual because i've got so much reverb and stuff but okay that as far as i could tell that wasn't glitching in fact what I might do is, um, I might, in fact, I'm going to leave that up. I'm going to turn the mix down just so it, it will still run the same amount. It's not going to take anything away from the CPU. That's still going to be heavily used. It's just none of these effects will, um, it won't sound quite so odd when I play it. Okay, so we've got one track. Let's duplicate that up. So, to duplicate a track in Cubase, you can just right click and duplicate the track. Now, perhaps let me highlight the two and duplicate. So, let me do that again. Let's see what happens now. What I might do as well, just make a different color. It's not very appealing. Okay, now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six tracks. Um, it's telling us we've got nine up here because we've got the um, output and we've got, a, we've got a drum track here. So here's our tracks we're running. Let's So we've got to imagine as well we've got two effects inserts on each one and a, and a relatively heavily heavy CPU-based reverb. Okay, apart from it sounding slightly odd, it's running, isn't it? It's, it's fine. It's not falling over. Okay, so let's do that. Might take a bit of time to think about this now. So, here's our track count up here. We can actually see what we're running. It's thinking about it. So, oh, and I forgot to say as well. Not only that, but we're actually running OBS voice meter and some Line Six software going in as well. So they're all obviously taking a little bit of um, the process and RAM. Okay. Apart from it sounding rubbish, I can't, it's not glitching. Okay, so we're at 15. I'm just going to take that up again. Let's see what happens. It's going to take a bit of time to think about this. What I can do as well, if you're interested in I could um, run it with virtual instruments as well. If Just leave a comment if you want to see that, what a basic PC can do with... Um, audio tracks and virtual instruments. This may struggle now. We've got 21 tracks with all those effects going on, but oh, we, yeah, it's still fine. Apart from, sorry about the um, sound. Let me, I'm just gonna turn that bit down. Okay, so, and if I press stop, start, relatively snappy still. So that's 21 tracks. Obviously, we've got the drums and stuff we're not worrying about at the top, but... Oh, sorry, delay is still going. So, and we've got two insert effects on each one. Now, I know this isn't going to more like too much more of this, so let's do another four, say. Um, duplicate tracks. And my only reason for doing this is showing you that it's great. Modern technology and all the breakthroughs are fantastic. But I think sometimes it may be worth because i'm i fall into this trap all the time i see things and i think i yeah i definitely i need that i need that new computer coming out and stuff but as a reality check you've got to imagine how many tracks you actually use in your mix and then do you actually need it if you're a film composer and you're using or you're doing mixes people are sending you mixes and you've got 100 tracks in your mix then yeah you need something really 
you know really powerful with a lot of storage and a lot of ram but if you're working at as a hobby you're making a few tracks and you never use anything more than 10 tracks then the chances are a computer you may have at home or someone may be willing to donate you may well do the job okay did it oh yeah it stuttered he thought about it we did well, it's playing fine oh no we got another now yeah I'm seeing it glitch a tiny bit. And obviously virtual instruments will do a lot as well. So I'm not saying this is a perfect computer for recording, but even with it glitching like that, as long as you're happy with it glitching, and I'll tell you another thing we can do. Sorry, the delay's going off again. Under studio, I can actually, um, oh, I can't. I'm using voice meter, damn it. Um, that's another thing to take into account. It, voice meter is not the most efficient um, ASIO driver, ASIO driver or ASIO driver. If I was using the Line 6 software that I'm running here, I could have set um, the, the um, latency m much greater. The, if you do that under studio, the bigger you go in the amount of latency to record, obviously you're going to get a delay, but if you're only mixing, so you've recorded the tracks, that doesn't matter at all. We'll perhaps look at that as well. And that can make your computer much more efficient. Okay, so what have we got to? We've, yeah, it's kind of... It's probably getting to the point now where you'd start to think you're reaching the limit. But you've got a lot of reverbs running there and delay. So you're only running two effects on each channel as well as the other thing to take into account. Perhaps I'll let you know in the next video. I'll run it with the proper drivers, the proper ASIO drivers. For the sound card for the or the interface and let you know but just for argument's sake let's just take another three say and duplicate so and of course you wouldn't run this amount of reverbs necessary anyway because you would set you know like in our earlier videos you'd set a, a a send effect up and you'd send all of these audio tracks to the one or two reverbs that you have set up so you wouldn't use any of this um cpu did that I, do, I think that works 27 we're still playing it's not as if it's giving up it's not I wouldn't say it was too happy but you can see the sort of track count you can look at if you're running a, a light mix with a few effects um, shall I just do I'll chuck another two in see what happens um, but I definitely will let you know when I'm running the right interface as well, rather than running it through voice meter and having OBS going as well. Oh, yeah, it's done it, so. And it's still going. Let's just do another couple. Okay, so we're at 31 tracks. We have two insert effects, one quite a um, heavy CPU um, intensive reverb. Actually, it seems better than it was before. <laughs> um, duplicate. Let's have another look. Okay, I could go on for a while, but let's just take it. That works. Okay, so we've got 33 tracks of audio. On a... Oh, got a slight glitch there. But that's 12 years old, that computer, with um, 2.19 available gigabytes of RAM to me to work into Cubase. And it's all right. There's no... I think I could make, I think I could create a track with 33 tracks and a couple of inserts. I don't know, that's probably another project to have a go at. But obviously, most probably PCs you'll buy will be much better spec than this. But I thought I'd show you what it could do. I thought it'd be quite interesting. Perhaps we'll do the same thing, but with some audio tracks and um, virtual instruments to give it a go. But that's an old PC and it's, it's all right. It's not too bad, not too bad at all. Take care.